Okay, welcome and thanks for joining us at our Aging in Place seminar. I'm Catherine Falcone. I'm going to play a short three minute video. Only 10 seconds is outside, so don't get nervous. <laughs> so we're going to watch the video first. I am Catherine Falcone. Four years ago, I was diagnosed with I started safety outfitting services. We're located in Williamstown, New Jersey. This is my building. Now that we're back in the office, let me tell you a little bit about my story. I went to the Orlando conference to educate myself and see what I could do to help. My career for over 20 years has been owning a construction company. Three things came together to help me start the Safety Outfitting Services Division of the SOS Group. First, my diagnosis, dermatomyositis. Second, my best friend who worked with me for over 20 years passed away at 50 from lung cancer. There were no contractors to help with her immediate home modification needs. Third, my daughter Alyssa graduated from college and started working in home health care. She found herself calling me to help her with ramps, lifts, etc. She couldn't find a contractor to help her with her patient's needs either. We all saw the need for help, so I asked Alyssa to come join me and start the new division of the SOS group, helping people stay at home or aging in place for people with myositis disabilities, and illnesses. Barrier-free living to stay home with our loved ones is our objective now. I sent my team to educate themselves to the National Home Builders Association to be certified aging and place installers and learn about ADA compliance. This program is approved by the ADRP. Obviously, I campaign every state to install a ramp for each and every one of you or make home modifications. So, we provide medical equipment to the TMA community and give back proceeds to TMA. On the front page of the MySites website, you will see SOS Group. Just follow the link to our website for more information or call us. We are here to help you with your medical equipment needs or home contracting questions. Let me introduce you to the team at SOS Group. Hi, I'm Joseph Ambricelli. I'm one of the installers here at SOS. I'm an expert on how things are constructed in your home and best suits your needs. Unfortunately, I am stuck in New Jersey. Hi, I'm Ryan Aaron. I'm a certified aging in place specialist and division manager here at SOS Group. I am currently working with the state of New Jersey on the Hurricane Sandy Modular Ramp Project, where we are helping those affected by the storm gain access to their homes and get their lives back in order. Luckily, I am here in Reno with you all and I look forward to getting the chance to meet all of you. Hi, I'm Dominic Kimberselli, and I'm an actor. You might have seen me on a couple of shows such as Boardwalk Empire and Unforgettable. When I grow up, I hope to be the spokesperson for my slightest to help raise money for research and find a cure. Hi, I'm Alyssa. I'm the marketing manager here at SOS. I work with senior groups, rehabs, charities, and hospitals. I'm here at the conference with you now, and I look forward to learning and experiencing the Myositis Conference. Hi, I'm Michael Muratore. I'm the online product manager here at the SOS Group. I work with our manufacturers to get the newest and best products for our clients. I'm unfortunately stuck here in New Jersey, but I hope to meet you all next year at the next conference. Okay, so that's my story. I wasn't able to bring everybody here, and Dominic's my grandson, just so you know. It's a family-owned and operated business. So SOS Group has teamed up with the Myositis Association to donate some of the proceeds back to the association for purchases made from SOS Group by a TMA member. This is the chart that we have listed on the website, and it's broken down as far as how much you're spending. Okay, now this class is about aging in place, and the aging in place and what it means to you. The ability to live in one's own home and community safely, independently, comfortable, and by modifying your home to fit your changing needs. The last thing anybody wants to do is move. Aging in your home is difficult enough. That's what we thought we'd all have to deal with. Now we have aging in our home with myositis, which can present extremely challenging and discouraging obstacles. So how many of you focus, how many of you face some form of physical obstacle in your home on a day-to-day -day basis? Can you raise your hand? 
We all do, just about. I know I do. So one of the um, most problem problematic problems that we have is entering and exiting the home. Navigating your entry exit way can present quite a challenge, especially when we have steps, porches, high thresholds that are involved. So one of the solutions that we can offer for you would be a ramp. So our slogan at SOS is ramp it up. This is an aluminum ramp with a transitional threshold that was placed in front of somebody's home. And this is a fun slide that I put in, in between some of the other serious slides that we do have. And this is a fun fact about myself. As part of managing my disease, I raise chickens. Does anybody raise chickens in here? I haven't found anybody. They have to get them. In New Jersey, it's kind of like a really Hollywood thing to do. So I eat the eggs. I, I love the eggs. And um, this is my one chicken, Tinkerbell. And I found that they all have different personalities. I know. All of a sudden, I woke up one day and I wanted to raise chickens, and I love all my chickens. So it's a great thing to help me manage my time, and it's therapeutic. So ramps are made for a variety of situations and circumstances. They can be situated on outdoor steps and small level rises. It offers, of course, greater accessibility to the wheelchair bound and to those with limited mobility. There's all different kinds of ramps. Suitcase ramps are portable. You can actually fold them in half and take them with you. I don't know if a lot of people know about suitcase ramps. I know even our ambulance um, department in our town didn't know. They're great. They can be placed somewhere where you're visiting where you don't have access to get into the home. So they're made for outdoors and indoors. The picture on the right, you can see he had a couple steps. We actually drilled that into his steps. That was his preference. And then it leads up to the stair lift, which is the higher level on the second floor. So either which way, they're great. And the best part is they're, they're very inexpensive to have. Modular ramp systems, they come in different materials. There's aluminum ramps, and there's also steel ramps. It's really basically your preference and how it might look in your uh, front of your house or the side of your house, the back, whatever would look nice for you, whatever you would prefer. Just a little tidbit about SOS, we are the official builders of Hurricane Sandy, the modular ramp relief program. Hurricane Sandy hit our state in 2012. We're just having the houses elevated now. We're going in and putting in ramps for the people that have not been able to come out of their houses for some almost two years, and we're still doing it. It's another probably two years before the operation is done. So that keeps us very busy doing that. Due to different home structures, you might have too many levels or steep steps. A ramp is not always an appropriate option for your home. So what we can offer is a platform lift. I don't know if anybody has seen these before. Platform lifts are a great backup to the ramps. You can see over here, you actually walk onto here or roll onto there, whatever which way. These flap up and then you push a button. You can go up to the second level. The lattice gate right there opens and you just go to your second level. So it's an easy solution. And there you see the steps were so steep the ramp just didn't work. If anybody has questions, you know, during the session, just ask. Uh, they're weatherproof. So the only one I've ever seen go down was due to the hurricane sand. That's because that was sitting in about three to four feet of water for such a long time. When we did get those floodings, that water stayed for a good period of time, which is definitely what would happen with something like that. In the snowfall situation, you also have the option to make those enclosed. If you, you might see them sometimes, you'll see them at uh, like churches perhaps. That's, they're very common there. It's still not a, it's technically not an elevator, okay? But they are suitable to work anywhere, in any conditions. And you can also <coughs> give these a logical thought if you live in a flood area. You can always leave them at the elevator position this way they're not sitting in there so 
Okay, so moving on. Oh, another fun slide. So this is myself and one of my other chickens, and his name is Victor, and he seems to be happy. And that seems to be the common theme during this conference, happy music, and we all want to, like, is serious enough, so I just wanted to interject something a little fun for everybody. Okay, yes. Okay. Okay, yeah. If you have a two-story home, can you have the platform lift mounted on the outside and then have a um, you know door cut in the upper story so that you can do that? Because yeah. the chair lifts one thing, but my husband has trouble getting up out of the seated position, so that would be nice to. Uh, you, you can do that. Um, what would happen there would be that you would actually, like you said, you would actually have to cut a doorway into the uh, foundation of the room. So what would happen there is you would have to put a, uh, uh, a header board across the top and just refinish the outside. But it can definitely be done. They, uh, they definitely go that high. Okay, and like when you're looking at cost, I mean, just I know it's individual, but just roundabout ballpark, what would you be looking at um, for that? For the regular uh, residential platform lifts, you're probably looking about between $7,000 and $7,500. That includes installation usually. Um, they're definitely more money than just the regular stairs. Absolutely. Yeah. And then the construction. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have the additional construction. I would say probably eleven, twelve thousand dollars. Okay. That's all the construction. Okay. Where an elevator would naturally run you about thirty to seventy thousand dollars. Absolutely. That's, yeah. That's yeah. a very cheap elevator. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it works, so it's great. Okay, let's move on to the next. Okay, so living with myas, I guess, it can present muscle weakness. The result is difficulty accessing and climbing the steps inside your home. So with solutions, we're up to the stair lifts now. So there's straight stair lifts. Also know that if you have a curved uh, set of stairs that they're available also. They're a little bit more money also. So just so if anybody's interested in prices since you ask, a straight layer, a stair lift would run about $3,000 and a curved stair lift, six to 10, depending on how many steps you, you'll have and how steep it is. Now this is an outdoor stair lift that we actually put in for one of the Hurricane Sandy people. So I'm going to take that up to their second level. And this uh, actual unit is weatherproof. And you can also see where it's on the top of the stairs, they're going to have it there, and they have covers that they put over the top of the seat to protect it. Okay, another one of my chickens, and his name is Alex. So going from a sitting to a standing position can be especially difficult, we all know that. So one of the solutions we have is a lift chair. So if you were out at my table, you can get a brochure. I actually use a lift chair for my IVIG infusions that I have monthly. So when I have my Benadryl drip before my IVIG, I recline backwards and go to sleep. And that's about a two hour thing. And then I push myself forward and then I have another six hours with the IVIG and I'm forward. And it also helps me go forward because by the time the end of the month comes, I literally can walk and my muscles hurt and everything. So it's a great uh, chair. It comes in all different colors, all different materials. You can buy them online and then the uh, proceeds will go back to TMA. So they can be shipped, even though we're in New Jersey, they can be shipped to anybody in the country. And they'll get there two, three days. Okay, these are uh, doorways that we widened for a customer that was in a, a wheelchair. You can see right here, she had just a little bit of room. And sometimes you think that it just can't be done. This was 30 inches. She had just enough room for us to make it 36. And now the access is there for the person to come through with the wheelchair. This is one of our customers that we worked with. Her name is Natalie. She's actually 82 years old. She doesn't have a disability or a handicap. She moved into an over 55 community, which surprisingly, I, I don't know why over 55 communities are built the way they are. They're not aging and place friendly. So she wanted to make sure at 82, she's gonna stay there till 102. So she's very healthy, so that some of the things that we redid for her aren't completely 
uh, accessible if you're in a wheelchair, but it will be down in, in the future. So um, this is the first wall that came down. She took the hammer, put a hole in it, then she went to Florida. <laughs> so uh, she was lucky enough, and we were lucky enough to redo her entire home. So I just wanted to show you a couple slides of the, uh, of the house. And it will give you some ideas because sometimes you have a wall and you think, oh my gosh, I can't get through, what can I do? There's plenty of things you can do. And being in New Jersey and you're in California or wherever, you're going to have to hire obviously another contractor. You can always call us. I have you know, formed SOS for my myositis community. You can ask us any questions you like, any advice that you need. Okay? So the the next slide is the, um, the other side where Natalie was standing. It's the before the living room into the dining room. So there's a window on that side. This is the wall that's going to actually come down. This is the after. Okay, this is the living room into the dining room. Uh, we took out the carpet. I don't know if you noticed the carpet on the previous. She's all hardwood floorings. Now we put in an arched entryway for a nice uh, open space and for her to come through, and we added light, we redid the ceiling, and it's, it's very, very beautiful. Okay, this is the other angle into the dining room. As you can look in, we actually followed the arched uh, way on the other side, so it would look um, very even and beautiful. This is a picture of her master or bathroom before. You see you have the small door over there that you would never be able to get through, even if you're overweight, you can't get through. And this was her closet. So what we did was combine the two, and you'll see in the next slide, which is now one entrance, but you're able to get through um, with a wheelchair if you had to. The floors are flush, and you're going into her bathroom, and her closets are on the right. She eventually wanted Doors on the closets, I, I have a different um, look at, in my own home, I don't like to put the doors on the closets, it's just a look that I like, but she put the doors on there. Uh, but it's a nice new bathroom that she can walk into that's barrier free and safe. So this is a close up look of the after, it's a zero, zero entry shower. Does anybody know what the zero entry shower is? This is it. This is, if you didn't know what the term meant in the construction field, it's a proper radius for a wheelchair to roll in and turn. So there's no lip at all, you're just going right in. And there's a grab bar, there's actually a grab bar on the outside for her to, to hold on to, a grab bar on the inside, grab bars are important. This is another wall that we did. This was her wall for the, the living room, or the before picture, just a plain wall. So we dressed it up a little bit, actually a lot. So it gets rid of all the clutter that's in her house, and she has storage with cabinets underneath. And um, there's open air spaces. I, if you can see on the very top, we opened up the wall so the airflow could go through. And she was a person that liked a lot of sun in, in her home. So uh, we opened it up for the sun to pass through. Okay, this is myself and Alyssa who's running the slides, and my chicken bacon and we're feeding him cabbage that I grow in my garden, because I do that also. <laughs> okay, this is a picture. Again, we're still in Natalie's home. Uh, before, the, this is her kitchen. You can notice the dividing wall down here, and then there was an entryway that was very, very small to get through. Another uh, angle of the kitchen, the refrigerator was on the right, and it was obstructing to the uh, entryway to actually enter into the kitchen. Uh, this is an after of the kitchen, one of the angles. Now we took away that wall and again the arched uh, entryway and it's very easy to access at this point. The other angle of the kitchen, the microwave is lower for access and we have the granite countertops and it's light and airy. The refrigerator is actually cut out now in a pocket in the kitchen and gave a greater access with more cabinets. This is before, this is one of her guest bathrooms. Now this is an over 55 community, which isn't safe to be able to have to get into the bathtub. So we redesigned it for her actual caregiver that would stay with her. And this is after. It's a low entry shower, it has a small lip. 
So it's, it's not wheelchair um, friendly, but it, it could be. And this is the before picture of the guest bathroom sink. It's very small and short. In the in the no entry, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, the water water. goes the water goes to the middle. So how does, does she use a shower curtain? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. This is cup open. Yeah, well, this one so here, it's it, she that you know what her caregiver is not living with her yet yeah. in this picture, so she'll put a shower curtain up. So, but this one has a, a low entry um, lip, so the water doesn't go out. And then you'll just run the shower curtain, or you can get it, of course, with glass enclosure. They actually say that, which I don't, I don't know if I agree with, but um, the actual shower curtain is safer than the glass. So you're not hitting into the glass or cutting yourself. The glass is tempered these days, but according to everything that you read, ADA and AARP, they're telling us to use the shower curtain itself safer. Okay, again, this was the, the bathroom, the sink. And then we can show the after what we did to it. So we elevated her sink for her. She doesn't need to roll under right now. She's just having a few back issues. So she's able to just stand up straight and not have to lean to wash her face. So it's very comfortable when she uses it. Okay, fall risks. We are all at risk. There's no such thing as a zero fall risk. Each and every one of us is at risk for a fall, so living with myositis greatly increases this risk that we all know. So a couple facts. Did you know in the United States, falls account for approximately 8.9 million visits to the emergency department annually. Falls are the most common cause of traumatic brain injuries. And fall prevention. What can you do to decrease your fall risk inside your home? So of course we're going to plan ahead. So we want to learn what to do in case of a fall. Have a plan in place in case of a fall. You can have an emergency alert system or you can create an emergency call list. Now I again frequent the community forums on the myositis.org website. One gentleman wrote, I fell and all I could do was pray. So I had a right back. <laughs> And so the emergency alert systems are available to you. So it, it's definitely a good idea to have one. And the medical alert systems now are a little bit more sophisticated. They come with a watch or a pendant that you can have. Each option does come with a choice, and then you just press the button in case of an emergency, and the first responders will be notified. So there's a cellular option. It covers you within 600 feet of the base within your home. That's the cheapest per month. The actual equipment is free, and then there's a monthly monitoring fee for the system. Now there's a GPS option that works with you with the AT&T cell phone network to provide coverage anywhere you go in the U.S., which is great. So anywhere you are, you're protected. You just push the button, and somebody will be there. Is that only with AT&T? No. The, the service is provided through the company, so it's not like you have to sign up through an actual, um, I guess, cellular company. They take care of all of that. So basically what they're just telling you is that it is through a cellular system. So everything there is covered with no extra fees. With the, uh, I always personally advise the GPS. I think it's like a, a $10 difference per month. However, if you ever leave your home, you're capable of bringing it with you and guaranteeing yourself that, like she said, you're always covered. But uh, also with these, the GPS option is $39.95 a month, and as she told you, the equipment's free on that. But for all the sign-ups from a TMA member, we did donate $100 back to the TMA organization. Yeah. So if everybody signed, it's, would sign up today, I was like, well, what's 500 times 100? And like, I'm not great on math unless I have a calculator. So it was $50,000 would be donated back to TMA from us. So if you don't have one, you can get an application at our desk and mail it back to SOS and you'll be signed up. What's the size of this piece of equipment? The GPS unit, the, the one that's in the, um, the, the slide is 
much bigger than the one that you get. It's about so big. It looks like a what a, a phone system. It's, it's about three and a half by two inches. Yeah, it's very small. The so. watch is very light, and the pendant is a couple ounces. Yeah. The watch. Yeah, I prefer the watch. I, I would like my cell phone as a watch because I'm always losing my cell phone. So I can't wait for those when they're sophisticated enough. So I won't lose my cell phone. So one of the other things you might have thought of is, okay, well, if I fall inside my house, my door's locked, how is anybody going to get in to save me? So they come with lock boxes. Each medical alert system comes with a lock box to attach to your front door. So in case of an emergency where the front door can't be open from the inside, the response team can open the lockbox with your code and your key's actually inside. So that's only given to the first responders. So, and this is available to everybody nationwide, not just in our lucky state of New Jersey. <laughs> so this is one of my other chickens, and his name is Jesus. He's very fast, you can't catch him. And he's called an Easter Egger, and he lays blue eggs. So they're pretty eggs, along with the other brown eggs. He has great feet, and again, the eggs are delicious. Very healthy for us. Okay, some of the other helpful aids uh, we were hoping to have here at our table. Our box hasn't come yet. It might be here tomorrow. You can check back at our table. We're some sock aids, dressing sticks. Button zipper pulls, shoe horns, key turners, and leg lifters. Other things, of course, are canes, which we were supposed to have canes here. You can check back again also. I don't know if you ever seen the cat's meow canes with the design on them, if anybody likes cats, we're supposed to have them here. If they're not here, they're always available on our website for cat pet lovers. So, and your walker and your um, bed rails. Okay, finally, my last chicken is Benedict. That's my chickens. Okay, now grab bars, grab bars, and more grab bars. This is what we always preach. They're very inexpensive and extremely effective way to protect yourself from slip and falls. The more you have, the better. Just know that the grab bars aren't all for the bathroom. They can be placed throughout the whole entire home. Anywhere you might need a little pull to get out of a certain area. So there's grab bars that go around the faucet that, that help you steady you when you're turning on the water. 
also for the toilet tissue to hold on to it while you're pulling your toilet tissue. And the one that I always felt was the most important is the one for your tail holder, which doubles as a grab bar, so you don't pull the tail holder out of the wall. Because so we know we all do that, we hang on to that when we get out of our bathtub. They also come in all shapes and finishes to complement your house. Bronze is the ones that I have in my house. That's my preference. And then you have gold, silver, nickel. They're actually all different sizes, and they can be customized for your home. So you might ask yourself, is your home as accessible as it could be? One of the simple solutions, the rocker light switches are supposedly easier on your hands and your fingers. And also the lever handles are easier also. They reduce the need for the gripping and turning that a regular knob presents to you. Okay, another fun slide. Just me and my chickens, feeding my chickens, doing this twice a day. Okay, some safety tips. These are very easy safety tips you can do when you get home. Uh, never use your throw rugs, they are tripping hazards. Make sure there is good lighting at the top and bottom of the steps. Your staircases should have a non-slip surface, especially all your steps. And keeping a fire extinguisher in your kitchen and knowing how to use it is a good idea. Okay, it's simple also is wearing the proper shoes or slippers. Make sure your slippers and shoes have backs. The next slide will show you what I had to tell my mother not to wear. And um, these are backless slippers. They're definitely a tripping hazard. Wear the other kind if you can. Always sturdy footwear is something helpful. Okay, do you have any safety or accessible tips or tricks that make your everyday home life easier? Does anybody want to share with us anything that they might do in their home that helps it to be a little bit easier on your everyday living? Well, we have installed, I think they're called offset hinges. Offset hinges, what do you? Yeah, we're not.
piece that comes down off the door that, that seals that up. So if you have that gap, that means the door, okay. Just for both threshold? It's, it's, a, it's a two piece. It's a two-piece solution. One eliminates the threshold by putting in just a, a piece where the threshold would be. You just leave a gap between the threshold and the door. Yeah. Then there's another piece that goes on the bottom of the door that, as you open it, rises. And then when you close it, it goes down and seals that gap between the two. Oh. A zero threshold. The other piece that might be interesting is um, we switched to an induction cooktop. So there's no flame in the knobs and everything around the front, so it's easily accessible. Okay. And knobs are important, you don't want to have to turn them. You don't have to. Okay. It's more of a, a question of how people do it. I have both recessed lights and light fixtures, and I can't go down the ladder to change the light bulbs. How do people figure it out? Well, I actually have people that do it for me. <laughs> And I, my ceilings are like 20 feet or something, 18, 20 feet. Yeah, I, yeah, I hand you man, because you never want to be getting up on a chair or anything like that. I mean, it's, there are extension poles, whether or not you can reach it from standing flat straight on your feet, but otherwise you're just going to have to, you know, have somebody else do it. Yeah. Your best option in that scenario, unfortunately, not as a uh, uh, yeah, it drives me crazy when my, my, my lights go out and I go, okay, what do I do now? <laughs> 20 feet in the air. So, okay. As an interior designer, I always recommend a countertop at 36 inches high for bathroom mm -hmm. accessibility anyway. Okay. Yeah, the guest bathroom is the thir 36 inch. One of the things I do at my house, I was lucky enough to build a rancher uh, before I was diagnosed. I have one step that's tiled and you're stepping down to a small platform. So I put a strip of marble on the end of the uh, step so you can distinguish where you're stepping down. Then put low voltage lighting on the ends of the steps and the light will shine on the marble area. I can see the steps. So the lighting in your house is very important. So anybody else have any tips or tricks or fun things? <laughs> Maybe there's um, just gonna break back there. I'm gonna do that first part. Basically, it took a gate opener. Go to Tractor Supply, 150 bucks. Built this gate, has a button, so radio control. You use that to open and close the door. It's nowhere near as elegant. It's a lot slower than the door openers, but you don't have to just press the door jam. Mm -hmm. The least expensive you can find something, the better. So that sounds great. So we have a question back here. Yeah, actually, it's uh, sort of a different switch on things. The, we put ramps in the front and the back, but not these portable kind of ramps or aluminum ones or steel ones. We had them built of concrete to put them in because they look a lot better. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, they look sort of institutional, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Uh, also, we put in a real elevator, uh, up and down, uh, which is way better than a chairlift because you can just roll into it, push the button, and go to whatever floor you're in. So one of the things, these cost more money, but yes. one of the things to take into consideration is what does it do to the value of the house? Right. And uh, I have did some research and found that an elevator increases the value of the house more than the cost of the elevator, whereas a stair lift decreases the value of the house because it's uh, people don't want it. Right. Uh, so I think you have to not only think about the cost, but think about what does the cost mean in terms of your house is an investment. Right. So now you're making an investment, and the question is, uh, which you know, what's the ultimate value? Not just a, whether it's cheaper or not. Well, the the elevators definitely are going to increase your home value. Not everybody can afford the elevator. Definitely not. We take phone calls every day where we're doing in-home financing. Uh, people definitely cannot afford the elevator. 
The actual ramps that you're seeing are modular, so they're not permanent. They don't require permits. So if you're at that point where you don't need the elevator at the um, ramp any longer, you can just remove that at that point. The, the concrete ramps, they're, we're able to do them also. We do them in pavers, if you've ever seen them in pavers. But it usually, whatever your issues are, your budget or whatever, usually outweighs the, the need that the actual, um, you're not worried about the value of your home, you're worried about your immediate need at the, at the time. So, but I do agree with you, definitely. I know you want to keep asking about it. When it comes time to sell the house, this bad person, mm -hmm. is it relatively easy to remove them and patch up the walls so that they will not do? Usually you just leave them. You don't want to take them out because there will be a lot of patching and everything. So you don't want to take them out. It's so. very simple. Though. Yeah. It, it just, the next person will just you know, take them. Stability and safety. However, if you wanted them removed, uh, and unless it's fiberglass, which we usually do not mount fiberglass because any little movement on the fiberglass can crack the whole thing, um, but tile, you can honestly just fill it with uh, route or caulk and you can paint right over it, or you can actually order it in that color. Um, as far as the wall goes, there's Two options there. You can always spackle it, sand it down, repaint it, or they also provide wall patches. So the three holes are very close to each other. So what you can do in that case would be just throw the patch over top of it and call it over it. Um, yeah, we uh, luckily got into a one story home here a few years ago, but it's not disabled friendly at all. So we're going to have to make some changes to the bathrooms. And do you provide plans for that? Because I already have something for a contractor in California mm -hmm. to, to do the work I want him to do. But I need some experts to do the plans. How do I do that? You can either see an architect, so they can do it for you. Or if you want a CAD system, we can provide a drawing for you. We, that would be at a cost. We'd have somebody in our office who's certified to do that for you. Well, we can do a drawing and help you through that, and we can provide it to your um, contractor. So we basically take some pictures and do some measurement of the present uh, mm -hmm. setup, and then you can send it to you can email it to us, so we can help you with it. Okay, so we'll move on to the next slide. Okay, so so we're, we all know we're in New Jersey. So what to look for in your home accessible contractor in your state? We have a certified aging in place specialist certification, which is CAPS. So you might not find that with every contractor in every state. So if you don't, of course the normal is the most common sense. You seek referrals from friends, family, neighbors, coworkers, and others who have had similar work done. So what to also look for in your aging in place contractor, verify the remodeler has the appropriate license and insurance in your state. So many people I do work for, they never ask for my insurance certificate. Ask, ask for it with your contractor. It really does set your contractor apart from the guy with one truck who's doing it on the side to the commercial contractor who's your professional person. So ask for that. They'll give it to you if, if they're a professional. Select a professional remodeler with plenty of experience with your type of project. Remember the lowest price doesn't ensure a successful remodeling project. Okay, so we're going to see if you're paying attention. So can you remember how many chickens do I have? Six. Who said six? Six. It's six. <laughs> That's right. Okay. See, I have one other comment too if I can sort in yeah. uh, as a device. We just installed an emergency generator mm -hmm. uh, because we last year had four different power outages. This is in Seattle. I'm sorry, we don't usually have four outages, but we did. Uh, and many of these solutions you're talking about require electric power, one way or another. And uh, so, uh, as an added safety feature, I think a backup generator, which in our case 
runs on natural gas. We have natural gas at the house. That's the fuel. And the uh, it turns on automatically if the power fails. So it, and it supplies all reasonable power to the house, except for the dryer, for example, or something like that. Okay, that's a good step. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, that is a genius solution there. Uh, it's Down in San Diego area, we have a contractor who not only put in solar on your house, but he also can put in the batteries and a generator. Okay. So you completely, you can be completely off the grid if you have to. Mm -hmm. And it's coming because batteries are getting better and better, and of course the generator you already have, they build it in. And it's also off your natural gas. Yeah. Okay, so moving on. Okay, now this is to win a prize. You have to raise your hand, and we're going to see, can you name all of my chickens? It's to win a prize. So, we have six of them, so who want, does anybody want to try to win the prize? <laughs> okay, so all the way in the back, and then listen, can you listen to this? So we have a t-shirt for you. Good. We have to have fun. <laughs> yeah, two of them, Victor and Jesus, are two um, guys that work at my house and they take care of them. So I let them, I gave the chickens after Victor and Jesus, who actually help me clean out the chicken coop because I don't like to do that. <laughs> I feed them and they help me clean it. So. They're named after them, but um, they are all girls. If it was a boy, there'd be a rooster. And I don't want a rooster because they need to sleep in the morning. So. <laughs> the, you know what? I do that all the time. I actually have three cats too, and I'll call the boys girls. And, and I, yeah, I think, yeah, my names are just unisex. <laughs> so, okay, so we're past this. Okay, um, so we're almost done. Um, any other questions before we just have a little song that I heard the other day and I know when we were eating lunch they were, they were saying about music and how we should enjoy it and uh, embrace what the, the moment that we're living in. So it's a little silly but we're all serious here so I wanted to add also a song to end uh, the seminar. So anybody have anything they want to talk about before we play this song? It's actually Hold On For One More Day, which uh, was by Wilson Phillips in the 80s. And recently I was watching The Bridesmaids, and they played it at the end. So listening to the words, it, it kind of says, hold on for one more day, and hopefully we'll find a cure for myositis today or tomorrow. Just need to hang in there, everybody. So, no more questions. All right, so we'll just end with this song. Anybody want to come up and sing and dance? <laughs> so it gets me moving. So if you like, you can clap.
Okay, so that was my music. I hope this back. Everyone coming? Good. We're going happy And hopefully we'll see you next year. I think it's in Orlando, but I'm not sure. <laughs> but thank you everybody for coming. If anybody has any questions, we have our table out front and we hopefully we'll have the right items tomorrow or the next day. Thank you. Thank you.